In today's video, I'm gonna be showing you how to configure multiple services on the Megaport network as a service platform. Megaport addresses cloud connectivity, data center to data center connectivity. It also allows you to interoperate and internetwork between different clouds. It does all of this through a very easy and very intuitive management portal, which we're gonna check out in just a second. If you have questions as to whether Megaport is the right answer for your company, feel free to reach out to my company, Fullspan Solutions. There's a link in the video description below. We are carrier neutral with all of these different solutions, and we're happy to talk about the pros and cons and ultimately help you find the right solution for your business. With that being said, let's dive into the portal. When you first log into the Megaport portal after you register online, you'll come to a screen that looks something like this. This is going to show you the different options to go and provision services with Megaport. To get started, we wanna actually create another port We'll go to services. You'll see here I have my existing port. I don't have billing information entered. That's why we have the, the warning. Uh, this port is in Dallas. I'm gonna create a port in LA to get started. You go ahead and log in. You can see a list of all the data centers around the world. In our case, we're going to put in Los uh, Angeles. Scroll down. I'm gonna use the digital uh, realty LOS1 facility because I have some point of presence there. Go ahead and select that, click next. You wanna select a port speed. Now this is the physical interface speed of the physical port that you're going to be connecting to. This is where you'll get your physical cross connect from Megaport's network to your network. We're gonna go ahead and uh, choose 10 gigabits per second. We're gonna call it LA1. If you wanted to publish cloud services of your own to the Megaport marketplace, this is where you would do that. You would select public. In our case, we're an enterprise, we're gonna use private. Service level reference is an optional field to uh, add additional information. This is a long-term deployment for us, so we're gonna choose a 36-month term. If you have port diversity requirements and you wanna actually use one of the either blue or red diversity zones inside of the Megaport network, you can check the box for port diversity here. In our case, we just have a single port, so that's not a problem. We also do not need link aggregation, at least at this time, so we'll leave that disabled as well. Finally, click next. You'll see a summary of your port and its configuration. Click add port, and that port is ready to be provisioned. Again, once your billing information is in, it gets deployed nearly immediately. Now, I wanted to talk to you about some of the services that are available inside of the Megaport platform. There's a number of services. We're actually going to configure a Megaport uh, IX interface, as well as a point-to-point, -point, a virtual cross-connect, or a VXE, between our two ports in our two different data center locations. Let's dive in and check out that IX port first. If you simply navigate back to the physical port that's already configured, you can click connect in the upper corner here, or you can choose from any of the options here. In our case, we wanna use internet exchange. An internet exchange is a place where you can peer with other service providers, typically the heavy content throughout the internet, uh, and is actually a fairly significant portion of your total internet bandwidth. Uh, you may, it may benefit you to join an internet exchange. In this case, we wanna be on the Los Angeles Megaport IX, so we can search for that in the box here. We can click next. We'll use the connection name field to give it a, a descriptive uh, name. We'll just call it LA IX port. Service level reference again, we'll leave that blank. We can actually rate limit how much bandwidth we can take in and out of this port inside of the Megaport portal as well. Keep in mind that on your router, you'll want a shape to match this value. In our case, we're gonna leave it wide open and do the full 10 gig. The state is already set to enabled. We're gonna click next. Because we're taking multiple services all on a single port, we actually have to differentiate those services and we're gonna do that with a VLAN tag ID. You see there is an option here to leave it untagged. If you check that box, it will you know, gray that out. In our case, we're going to put in the VLAN ID of 1000. We can put in our autonomous system number. This information is going to go to the route server inside of the Megaport IX. We need to take a MAC address and configure that, an optional BGP password, and a peering macro as well. The MAC address, because we're using a sub interface on our router, we are going to, uh, actually I'll show you how to go do that on a Cisco router. Go to your router, Go ahead and go into config T. We'll actually create the interface, interface gigabit zero, 
slash zero slash zero slash one dot one thousand to keep it simple. Here we will also configure the encapsulation dot one Q and one thousand. That creates a sub interface and gives it the VLAN tag ID of one thousand. Let's exit back out of that. And what we can do then to get this MAC address is show interface gigabit zero slash zero slash one dot 1000. And this will show us the MAC address. We can copy that and actually come over here and paste that into the MAC address field. The reason the MAC address is required is to make sure that only a single host is talking uh, or speaking to the rest of the internet exchange. It's a common switch platform. So having uh, tight control over who is speaking on the fabric is very important. When you're all done, go ahead and click next and click add IX. Now you can see that we have our LA port and we have an LA IX uh, interface underneath. Both are running at full 10 gig capacity. The top interface is a 10 gig interface. It says it's 100% allocated and the bottom is a full 10 gig connection to the IX. The cool thing about Megaport is you can oversubscribe these services. Of course, it's up to you to make sure that you're not you know, causing network congestion when you do that. Let's go ahead and actually add another service as well. This time, let's go ahead and click connect. We're going to actually implement a virtual cross connect between our LA and our Dallas location. We'll go ahead and click private VXC. We see our other port available here, Dallas one. Let's click next. We can give it a name. In this case, let's call it LA to Dallas. We can rate limit it. In this case, let's do five gigabits. We can give this a VLAN ID. Let's do 1001. Then you can also select your term length for this VXC. We'll go ahead and go with 12 months for this one and then click next to finish. You'll see your details, confirm and click add VXC. Now, as you can see, there's additional options under this LA port. You'll notice it is 150% allocated, meaning we are oversubscribing the port. And you will see both of the options underneath here. Finally, at the bottom under Dallas, you'll see the LA to Dallas VXC listed there as well. Let's go ahead and add one more service to this LA port by clicking connect. We can click cloud. And here we can scroll through an extensive list of cloud service providers. Let's go ahead and connect to the Google cloud. And here you will have to have a Google ID to go ahead and um, connect to the Google cloud. The Google management portal will provide that for you. I'm gonna go ahead and use their sample value here. With that information, we can go ahead and find the correct location. Let's scroll through here and find Los Angeles. You notice this is on the red diversity zone, which is good to know. Then we can click next. Again, we select the details to Google, we'll call this. Rate limit, 500 megabits per second. VLAN ID, 1002 and we see our monthly cost to make this connection. Go ahead and click next. And finally, go ahead and approve that value when you're satisfied with the details. There you have it. We have three separate services configured on our single port with Megaport. We have an IX connection. We have a virtual cross connect to one of our other sites, and we have a link to the Google Cloud. Once all the billing information is updated in this account, you can actually go ahead and finalize the provisioning, and this will be provisioned nearly instantly for your use. This has been a quick overview of how to get started with the Megaport portal. There's a lot more to learn. Hopefully you find it simple and intuitive. If you have questions, comments, tips, or tricks, leave them in the video comment section below. Stay tuned. I am going to have more content like this coming in the near future. Thanks for watching.